To continue this celebration of episode 1500 on BYU Sports Nation, we have identified 15 of our favorite moments and some general show themes in the lengthy and special history of BYUSN. It's not a ranking, but it's an excuse to walk down memory lane yeah. of the past five and a half years of the show. So let's keep it weird to begin because that's the way that we're going to do it. And Jeremy, my spidey senses have again indicated that you are a key component in many of these strange happenings. What? Let's rewind to December of 2015. Viva Las Vegas and the Vegas Bowl. We'll start with the pool jump at the Hard Rock Hotel. It was freezing. Gosh, I look amazing. You, Hey, you do look pretty good. What? All in hopes of inspiring BYU to beat Utah in the Vegas Bowl. Yeah, it was really cold. Oh, the splashdown. I can feel the cool. Now you think, oh, Vegas, it's warmer. No, it was 50 degrees. We're in the shade, so it's probably like 38. Jump into that water <laughs> that wasn't necessarily heated. It was freezing, man. That was really fun. I was, was a really little fun. concerned for you when you got out of the pool because it was so cold. I'm concerned for me looking at me back then. Jeez, <laughs> it's only gotten worse. Thank you for doing that, by the That's way. I've got to play like four Great times a week. Basketball. But yeah, like you said, you need to ask for more retweets to get that pool jump in play. Yeah, exactly. Also, how do you like your ribs? How about the time the microphone broke in studio? Okay, the, so before the show, I was playing with a microphone. This is our old desk. And uh Yep, broke it. Uh oh. So uh, Ryan Rodriguez, <laughs> one of our production assistants, held the microphone up during a Mike Littlewood interview. His arms his, like shaking yeah, uncontrollably. Arms, yeah, yeah, that was fun. We have a new desk, and hopefully, I won't break the microphones here. Wow, oh, rewind to 2014. How about your hair in that moment too? Very nice. Yes, just like my bod. yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, then there's this unforgettable gem with national champion BYU football receiver, former NFL guy, Glenn Kozlowski in studio. We can bro. We well, it's not bro knock. hugs. It's a man hug. We man yeah. hug. During the break. And we'll kiss. Nope. <laughs> On the cheeks, though. Oh, okay. On the cheeks. That's all. <laughs> oh, we have to go to break now? That's crazy. Yeah, let's go quickly because um, you want to kiss. Okay. <laughs> it still makes you uncomfortable. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't kiss and tell, though, you know? I, I love Glenn Kozlowski. He's a weird dude, but so am I. Oh, he's he's one of the greats. Shout out to Glenn. What's up, man? Yeah. Uh, and then there was the time you said that uh, you could run a 4.940. Oh, that, boy. That didn't happen. Do we, do we have to show this? We uh, You ran twice. You thought you had a chance, but you're, you're set up to fail. At least it was faster than Tom Brady's combine run. And I'll really? say this. that's the standard? What the heck was I doing running in baggy basketball shorts on a grass field outside yeah, into a headwind? It was an aerated field. I did so many things wrong yeah, you, even to prepare. You were trying really hard, though. I was. Look at your face. There. I tried really hard. Mitch yeah. Matthews was like, dude. What, you set yourself up to fail and look like an idiot. Why were you not wearing spikes? Why were you not on a track? Why were you not, like, in compression gear? Like, yeah. we could have helped you. We, he's like, seriously, you would have shed at least, like, two tents just, mm. just with equipment and track and being indoor. And I was like, whoa, okay. It would have been 5'1". All right. Instead of 5'3". Okay, right? there you go. Ooh. There you go. Yeah, so that didn't work out, but it was fun to do. Speed training begins uh, sometime over the summer. Really? With- really? Whoever wants to volunteer to be my speed coach. You're going to try it again? Why not? Oh, okay. Why not? Cool. I got to be better than a 5-3-5. Five, five. That's come on. Let's do it on a track. Let's put on some spikes. Let's do this thing, yeah. man. Skip, we got to do it the right way. only. We got to do it the right way. <laughs> Short shorts. <laughs> Maybe an Olympian will train me because uh, we've talked to a few in Studio B. I mean, one of the really cool things we get to do, yes, is talk to high-performing athletes. But the Olympians, Guard Young, silver medalist for USA Men's Gymnastics, Dane Blanton, volleyball, Ed Eyestone and his mustache, track and field superstar Jared Ward competed in the Olympics in the marathon and finished top 10. Kate Hansen, the Luge Coog, and Taylor Sander of BYU Men's Volleyball, also a medalist, a bronze medalist in 2016. This has been incredible. Yeah, it's been really fun. I, when I was little, I don't think I'd ever meet an Olympian, let alone, like, know of some Olympian. So it's cool that BYU's put out so many. Dane Blanton, the exception to that. But, they, yeah, just they get to come in studio and we meet these people, and it's really fun. Then there's the uh, the old Mitch Matthews conversation. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Mitch. So in the summer of 2014, on a very bored day, the comment was uttered, 
that the BYU receivers were elite. And I go, whoa, 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 what? That was whittled down to Mitch Matthews, and then that was our Mike and Mike Joe Flacco convo, I guess. That summer and subsequent summers after that. Um, and then when he went to the pros and whatnot. So, yeah, Mitch Mitch Matthews. Um, we had him on a while back, and uh, I asked him <laughs> about whether he still gets uh, the elite convo from fans. Hey, Does the elite still come up with you? Like, do BYU fans still, like, yell, elite, or whatever to you? All the all the Miami Dolphins fans. That's all they say to me now too. So they say that well. Now that's not true, but it's funny. He caught his only <laughs> NFL touchdown pass as a member of the Miami Dolphins in the preseason against his former team, the Vikings. Well, he had a lot of former. Teams. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. Uh, I listen. I love Mitch Mills. Uh-huh. He was awesome. Just wasn't elite. He that's, was part of the last. Yeah, he was great. great. Productive receiving group that BYU's had in 2015. He was the leader of that group. Let's hope this year's team can be more. Yes, receivers can be more like that. Let's go. Veterans, uh, they have something to prove. Tanner Mangum threw year. for 3,300 yards as a freshman. There's a reason for that because he had incredible receivers. And you can't accidentally get 3,300 yards. It doesn't. Poof! It's all the receivers. No, it's that was Tanner's peak year for sure. One of our other favorite people to have on the show is BYU women's basketball coach, NBA veteran, Jeff Judkins. <laughs> Just because he's one in a million. He's awesome. He gave us Juddy Face, one of the more viral moments that we've experienced in yeah. our five and a half plus years of this show. And it happened during the NCAA tournament selection show when he got the seating. All of his team and coaches are freaking out. They're excited. He's not impressed. It's unimpressed. So we put him into a bunch of memes with Lance Stevenson blowing. Well, into his fans ear. did. We and just handed it to you and you, BYU. Kayla Maroney getting her silver yeah. medal unimpressed. To the point where in the NCAA tournament game BYU played, they showed some of them because it went. It was that viral. Yes. Viral. Juddy face. Yeah. It was also fun to surprise Coach Judkins in the team's most recent trip to the NCAA tournament when they found out they were going to Stanford, California as a seven seed. He said, it'd be nice if Steve Young showed up, and then we went to work and put this together. You, you also called out Steve Young. Have you reached out to Steve? No, I, I haven't. Uh, I know he's busy, but it'd be really be nice if he could kind of come. And- Coach, this is great. I'm going <laughs> to... How else is going to come out in power, man? We're going to be there Saturday. This is exciting. You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're showing up, we're going to be pretty pumped. I know my team will for sure. Coach, we'll be we'll be small, but we'll be loud. All right. Okay, that's all that matters. <laughs> it's it's not the volume; it's the noise. That's what it is. <laughs> Thank you so much. That'd be cool to see you, Steve. Oh. What a great moment. I'm so glad we could orchestrate that. And Steve went, and they won. It was great. Then there was the summer of 2016. Big 12 12 expansion, or so we thought. BYU maybe in the Big 12. uh, Courts, BYU, the whole thing. So during that time, we created what's called the Big 12 Update Center. And Ben Bagley would man it. We would go to him. He would give us the latest and we would talk about it. And we just kind of miss it. So uh, let's go back to the Big 12 updates. Center. Dust it off. Decision 2016. A Big 12 expansion update <laughs> on BYU Sports Nation. Well, guys, welcome to the Update Center. Listen, I got a fax. Still no news. Back to you. Uh, I wish there was news. Kind of. Not, not really. I love but how kind unexcited. Of. And unimpressed Ben Bagley looks in yep. that moment. Bagley face. 2016, yep. an election year. We thought BYU might get into the Big 12. Oh. Yeah, still no news. <laughs> I'm just envisioning Jason Shepard running down here with the paper. <laughs> we did it! We did it! We got it! One of the more visual elements of the show is the blue goggles. Blue which goggle alert. Blue goggle Initially, Jerem was invented alert. to Blue make alert. fun of yours truly yeah. for my overly <laughs> optimistic takes at times. And then it evolved into any wild take, whether yeah. super optimistic or super negative, right. from any BYU fan. Basically, Cougar Board Incarnate was what it's become, <laughs> I think, at this point, which can be overtly negative we have several versions of the blue goggles we have the easygoing blue goggles with the wood frames i'm wearing those right now we Mm -hmm. have the bedazzled blue goggles i'm putting on those over you have the oversized national championship blue goggles for heisman yeah yeah exactly it's it's, uh it's been a fun road man i'm glad that uh, everyone can make fun of me and it could turn into something 
It's great. Yeah, it's I'm great. glad that we can make fun of you in a formal way. Yes. We've had some really big wins to celebrate here, which has been awesome. And uh, one of the first ones we had was when we were radio only for the first uh, six months. BYU football went to Texas, won the Taysom Hill hurdle. It was awesome, man. Here's what it sounded like after that win. I think the word epic is vastly overused in our society. But, I mean, the BYU-Texas result probably deserves it. BYU comes out. Uh, they don't just beat Texas. They pound Texas. It was, it was incredible to see BYU take over that game defensively uh, as it progressed. Taysom Hill and the BYU Cougars and Jamal Williams and everybody. Bronco said, we won't be intimidated. And they weren't. 550 rushing yards <laughs> against well, Texas. Well, that was, that was uh, oh, are we talking 2013 or 2013? 2013. 2013. 13. That okay. was the radio My bad, only. 2013. Yeah. 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 Uh, men's basketball beat Gun- – well, they did it in 2014. Yes, they did. Men- men's basketball beat number one Gonzaga in 2017. That was an awesome win. Here's what that sounded like. Men's basketball, maybe you heard, and if you haven't, where in the world have you been? Upset number one ranked Gonzaga in the kennel on Saturday, 79-71. Oh, 30 man. and 0. Nope. They had printed 6,000 newspapers ready to hand out. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Yes, BYU beat number one for the first time ever in basketball, handing Gonzaga its first loss of the season with a 1% chance to win. That was awesome. So good, right? Three times in a row. That I was the third of the three. I can't believe it. This is it. crazy. You went to the wrong Gonzaga. And then football this last year at Wisconsin. That was fun. <laughs> craziest thing we saw on saturday BYU won the game <laughs> that's the craziest thing like BYU went in beat sixth ranked wisconsin 21 point underdog heisman trophy candidate on the other side top 10 team i mean this is one of the greatest wins like you said in byu football history BYU won this game wisconsin did not lose it BYU won it this is one of the greatest wins in the history of byu football it was a great win only Wis- loss for Wisconsin at home. Wisconsin goes 8-5, and five, so perhaps dithers it a touch, but still a great win for BYU football, oh, which was so fun. Right? Absolutely. You were there. It was great. I was here. And, of course, when it was announced that BYU was lifting the ban on caffeine on campus, I wasn't here for that show, but I remember waking up uh, and thinking, oh, my gosh, this is a big deal. And Lindsey Lewis, at the end of the show, drank some Coke and then spewed it for it. It all went horribly wrong. <laughs> Expectoration <laughs> in abundance. And, uh, yeah, since then, BYU hasn't won more than seven games in a season. So I'm wondering if there's a caffeine curse. Is that uh, carpet still stained from that <laughs> Coke incident? Let me just tell you, that's some cheap carpet in there. It can easily be replaced. <laughs> or can, like a uh, casino in Vegas. Well, it's that industrial quality carpet. Yeah, it can it be easily cleaned as well. It doesn't smell of smoke, that's for sure. Jerem, several people have tweeted in that their favorite moment yeah. or most memorable moment has to do with, again, one of your hairstyles mm-hmm. or lack thereof because – you had your head shaved when you said that you would do that if BYU beat Gonzaga. It was number three at the time. I didn't think there was any way they'd do it. And they did it, which was awesome. And you were at the game. I was at the game. Which made it even better. I went, I went to the the first one, right? That was the first <laughs> yes. time. It was amazing. Yeah, so Skylar Halford, there's uh, Caitlin Jenny. No, Caitlin King. Former producer. Yep. Um, so there was an original set of, of uh, <laughs> clippers. It didn't work. And then uh, the sheep shears came in. Those work. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, Jerem, then uh, I, I don't, it, it was the karma that you took to Spokane that probably got that win. Perhaps. That's a thing that's developed. Uh, people come on the show. They have good games after. I think here's the music. There it is. Mm-hmm. This is actually the men's chorus live from the HVAC. The, the Gregorian chant. That's, we have them on demand. They just sit there waiting for any time we mention the karma, and then they do it. We're trying to get a uh, vocal point, but they're way too expensive. Anyway, so we, we thought... This is this is weird. And it kind of started with Skylar Halford, who were reflected a few years later on that very moment. The Karma Rewind, when you joined us in the early days of BYU Sports Nation on radio. <laughs> Once upon a time. <laughs> Do you remember so what happened ago. moments later, oh, essentially, man. Skyler? How could I forget? What was it, 28 points, 20? first career start, San Diego at home? <laughs> Should I say more? I mean, I think I still remember it. I may go back and watch highlights every now oh, and then. Oh, we're watching highlights right now <laughs> on the BYU TV side. Oh, gosh. And then, yes, we had met in studio before that, and the karma began, my oh, friend. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was after that when we thought, 
Okay, wait a this second. This is kind of weird. He makes his first start, goes for 28, has his best career game. Yeah, like who's this guy? And he just said 28. This is amazing. And then it became so, a we have, thing. We have yet to give it to a really bad player just to see how powerful it is. <laughs> All the players we give it to are at least decent. <laughs> We've had the opportunity to take the karma across the country and do live remotes in Miami Beach back in 2014, then in Las Vegas in 2015. Uh, those climates were a little bit different uh, yeah. to celebrate the bowl seasons. Mm -hmm. San Diego, another great climate right next to the oh. marina outside of the hotel. Then Fan Fest in Corona, California, where it was like 100 degrees and 100% humidity. We met Mo Longy there for the first time. And last year's Fan Fest in Mesa, Arizona, when there was an amazing BYU fan turnout. It's called BYU Sports Nation for a reason. Yes. It's not uh, BYU Sports in Utah Nation. It's the whole country, the whole world. So and Nashville, we we're coming to see you next coming week. Coming to your city. Okay, coaching switches. Uh, we've been here for some notable coaching switches, uh, most notably Bronco Mendenhall to Kalani Satake, and then very recently Dave Rose to Mark Pope. It was fun to cover those teams and see the new eras for each of those new coaches, and we're excited about uh, the basketball. Yeah, it does not happen often, especially at BYU where there is a head coaching change in one of the major yeah, sports. Yeah, because we treat it like a calling. It kind of feels Your that state way. state president goes for 10 years. What? I mean, what, 2005 was it's the not. last one before Kalani Satake, so 11 years, and then uh, Dave Rose was 05, and that lasted 14 years before Mark Pope takes over. Yeah, it can be shorter. Yes, it can. If you're good, it can be as long as you want. Oh, speaking of coaches, we've shot multiple commercials and often had coaches play prominent roles in those commercials on BYU TV, and it's Always interesting when uh, they get involved with us in some of that production. Take a look at this. For those not aware, yeah, the coach has pulled off a pretty good prank on us. So we're getting back at him now. On the phone, Spencer, a rare treat. We have two coaches, Coach Judkins and Coach Detmer. Yes, and uh, let's throw out a generic question. What's the most important part of coaching your respective teams to victory? Well, for me, it's having the players watch BYU Sports Nation before every game. If you guys didn't do the show, we wouldn't win a single game. You know, I agree with you, Coach Ever, because the talent has them and inspires us to be their best every day. Ty Detmer and Jeff Judkins looking on. <laughs> Juddy, I can't take Juddy okay. seriously when he's got his fist clenched nope. and pounding it into his hand. No, I cannot. Uh, we also really appreciate the people that help fill in on the show, so we enjoy a day off like everybody else. Brian Logan, Jason Shepard, of course, who's been a huge contributor here. Kate Hansen, Blaine Fowler, Greg Rubel, Voice of the Cougars, fun to him, have him co-host the show. Lauren McLean, most recently, uh, now a new mom. Kevin Nixon was a co-host of the show. Throwback, 55-footer. Awesome. Dave McCann, Duff Tittle, Kyle Chilton, co-host as well. You know who hasn't been a co-host yet? Dennis Pitta. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Maybe this is the off season. Maybe this but is where we make it happen. According to our IMDB page, he is a co-host of the show. So <laughs> thanks for that. To make that accurate, we have to have him actually host a yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, and maybe it's it's rumored for this summer. Speaking of IMDB, oh, nice. rumor, rumor. Dennis put a rumor. Wait, as a I'll co -host. be gone a week in July, so that'll be great. Just make sure he knows uh, when he comes in, if he comes in, yeah. how many days there are until uh, BYU plays Utah, because that's a thing that we have to revisit. The countdown to the Utes. 113, 113 days away from BYU against Utah, and the countdown, Jerem, you have to rewind to 2014, and it was not countdown to the Utes, but countdown to the Huskies from like 248 days away. I mean, that was crazy and we've done the countdown uh the, you know shooting off the uh, confetti cannons in in the BYU store in our studio in Lavelle Edwards Stadium even which was awesome and really fun but ultimately the most epic of countdowns and by epic I mean epic meltdown oh boy was last year oh boy and it sounded like this <laughs> Jason, Lauren, and Brian are here. That can mean only one thing. Brian, why are you wearing your football helmet? <laughs> He's always ready. <laughs> there, is a, there, there is an explanation. Hit it. Cougars in the draft. <laughs> Cougars in the draft. <laughs> what, Jason, what, Jason no, what, no, what did you do? I did what, nothing. What, what did we, you do? Try Let's try it again. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Count 
Okay, wow. there we go. One day away. Let's go. Oh, that was a disaster.